Anyway, this goes back over 50 years, and I had just finished my first year in college, and I really wasn't loving it, and um, I wasn't thrilled, so I said I'm not going to go back the next semester. And that followed up with what's called the draft status change. So I went from 1S slash C, which is student college, to 1A. 1A means you're ready to go. That's it. You're, you're, you're next on the list. And so I figured I would outsmart them. Instead of being drafted, I joined the Navy Reserves. And the following month, we were called active. So that didn't work out that well. But anyway, I always saw a picture of my uncle sitting next to the ship with the suit on. And the Navy gets the gravy, the Army gets the beans. So I figured I did the right thing. And they rushed us off to accelerated boot camp in Great Lakes. And we did eight weeks instead of 12 weeks. Went home for a week at home, and we got assigned to a ship. And the first thing they told me when I got to the ship was, this ship never goes out. So two weeks later, the ship was going out. <laughs> and it was called a shakedown cruise. And that means people like myself who had never been out to sea on a ship uh, see how we do, you don't get seasick, or whatever the case may be, that would be very bad. Anyway, um, went out, and our, our first trip was to St. Thomas. And they called that a rum run, so the people could buy liquor and get them back. And if you hadn't started smoking yet, you would start smoking that, because you could buy cigarettes for 10 cents a pack. <laughs> so I did both. I wasn't smoking, now I was. But anyway, um, you know, in, in the Navy, they say don't volunteer, but I decided volunteering was good. Um, I'd get to do things I'd never get to do any time in my life. I knew I'd never get to do them again and never get to do them ever again. So I decided to start volunteering. First, I became a duty crane operator. Now, when does a Jew from the Bronx get to operate a crane? This is, <laughs> this is something brand new, and I, I loved it picking up cars and dropping them in the holes, and, and it, was, it was fabulous. And I, I became a Liberty Launch driver, so I could drive the little boat from ship to shore to pick up people and bring them back, and that was a lot of fun. And I don't know how, if you've ever been in the service or not, but the way it works is you have a working schedule, then you have a sleep schedule, then in between that you have watches. So I became a bosom mate of the watch. I, my job was to work on the deck and take care of things. And they blow the little whistle when people came aboard the ship. You blow the little whistle, and um, you get assigned things. And you also have to learn when you when you're out at sea on watch, you start hearing things like um, the whistle goes off and all hands um, man overboard, starboard side, and you go to your station for that. Um, if you heard um, all hands. Uh, Biotech warfare, you'd put on your suits and you'd, you'd be ready for that. Um, you know, you'd hear, man overboard, this is a drill, this is a drill, and then you'd hear uh, biohazard warfare, this is a drill, and you'd hear, um, man your battle stations, this is a drill, this is a drill. Well, my battle station, in the front of our ship, there was a gun, you call it a gun, it's, it was called a 5 inch 38. That means the bullet is 5 inches diameter and 38 inches long. And my job was inside the gun turret, and the munition would come up through the floor. My job was to pick it up, put it in the breech, and lock the breech. Put my hands in the air and say, loaded. That was my whole job. And uh, we got to be pretty good at all this stuff. And then our next trip out, we um, went to New York Harbor, from Norfolk to New York, because that was a sail. And my girlfriend's father had a, uh, a yacht, and he'd pick us up at the pier, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, and then the next trip out, we started hearing things about Guantanamo Bay. And all the ships were heading down to Guantanamo Bay. Our ship, we were a repair ship. That means when people break down, they tie alongside of you, and you fix them up, so you put them back out. We went to the, the Port Rosie Roads in, in uh, Puerto Rico. And ships started coming into us, and we fixed them up, and coming into us, we fixed them up. And then one day, they said, we're heading down to Guantanamo Bay. And all of a sudden, there's, there's four destroyer escorts sitting out there waiting for us to pull in between them because we were a valuable ship. Because if our ship went down, the other ships wouldn't get fixed. 
which was good news and bad news. It means you're a big target, but you had four people protecting you. And so we're out at sea. It's about 800 miles from uh, Rosie Roads to Guantanamo Bay. And we were running what's called a zigzag or, or defensive course the entire way, uh, which is pretty stressful because one of my other jobs was I was on the helm driving the ship, and you had to stay in formation. And that was the 48 hours basically to get there. You're running about 18, 20 miles an hour or so. And all of a sudden, it's the second night out, and you hear this horrible, you have the old Aougu horn, and it's all hands, man your battle stations, this is not a drill. And you wake up, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, it's pitch black out, you run for your weapon, you load the weapon, and I, I guess I've never been so scared in my whole life. All of a sudden, this wasn't the cruise to St. Thomas, this was the real deal. And you know, we never shot it off, they never told us what, but assuming there were, there were you know, Russian submarines trying to get in, bring equipment in, and so on and so forth. But that was in incredibly, incredibly scary. Anyway, we finished our journey. Uh, we ended up in Guantanamo Bay. We anchored out for almost 16 weeks uh, repairing the ships that are, were in there. Um, Castro, just a point of information, had cut off water to the base. And um, our ship converted two tankers to uh, desalinization plants. And I just spoke to someone a few months ago, and they said they're still using the same desalinization plants that we built down there. Um, to finish it off, I guess for a little humor involved, we were one of the best uh, food pre preparation ships in the fleet. And we had awards for it, and we had this Puerto Rican chef. And when we left Puerto Rico, he never came back. That was the end of our good food. Anyway, that was my scary story.